Hi everybody and welcome to Quilting Delights. We are very excited today to get started on our Pillow Talk Pillow and Machine Quilting Revival Project. We're going to just refer to this as MQR for the rest of this year and um, that way we have just a standard standard phrase that we can we can talk about. Hashtag MQR anywhere you can and that will bring up other people who have worked on this project or who are working on this project. We are going to start today by talking about the quilting and actually the entire process for uh, getting a design onto a project like this. This one is a little bit different than normal, what I would call normal. Um, if I'm working on a project and I'm just doing background fills, um, I don't typically mark it, although sometimes I will. Um, but in this case, we have a very special set of designs that we want you to learn and some styles of quilting that we want to share with you. And this is the perfect project to make that happen. So um, let me tell you how I set up a, a, the fabrics and the projects and what my process is for getting this done. In your pattern, it will give you information on taking a piece of uh, fabric, this happens to be a Moda grunge fabric with stars, I just love it, and it's, the fabric is subtle enough that it will make the quilting pop, but it still has a little bit of texture to it, and that's what I'm looking for when I look for fabrics um, to do specialty quilting on. This particular piece I sprayed with Mary Ellen's Best Press, and then I put Shape Flex on the back, and Mary Ellen's best pressed that as well. What I'm looking for is to have my fabric as solid <coughs> and stable as possible. The more solid and stable it is, the better your quilting is going to be in terms of not having to fight the fabric shifting or moving. It just makes it so much easier and um, simpler to have that fabric solid. So once I get my fabric solid, um, I'm going to tape my piece of paper down onto my light box. That's what I like to use. I have a Caterpillar light table and um, we sell those here through the store. They're absolutely wonderful and makes all the difference in the world being able to see through your fabric to uh, mark your quilt. So um, I went ahead and I marked everything. And the nice part about marking your quilt is then you can see where there might be um, some gaps. Now I didn't I didn't put the stippling in the background here because I know how to do that so I didn't have to fill that one. And I just start looking at my designs and seeing what, um, what there is to do. And to me it's kind of a game. Um, anytime I can start quilting and continue it on all the way around, the more fun it is for me. And when I say fun, it's kind of like peeling an apple. You don't want to um, just scrape away at it or a potato. I like to peel it and peel it all the way around and see if I can get it in one long string. Well, quilting is kind of like that too. Um, so for example here, let me just point to this um, design. This is the circle with what looks like a flower in the middle of it. And you look at that and you go, oh my gosh, that is seems to be really complicated. And when we drew it, there were a lot of starts and stops with the flower petals. And then there is the um, swirly that goes around the outside edge. Well, believe it or not, I can do this entire um, I can do this entire center with one start and no stops. So let me show you a little bit about I'll show you in a minute what that looks like. But the other thing I wanted to say is um, I think there is I think we all imagine that we can just sit down and start quilting this and quilt it from start to finish without ever practicing. Libby Lehman, who's one of my all-time favorite quilt artists, was the most phenomenal free motion quilter I've ever seen. She was, uh, she was just outstanding and her quilts, um, a couple of her quilts are in the 100 best um, quilts of the world or of the century. I don't know what title it has, but her quilts are beautiful. At any rate, um, every time she would come and teach a class here, we would ask her, Libby, how did you get so good? And she would tell us, practice, practice, practice. It takes 10,000 hours of free motion quilting to be really good and consider yourself an expert. So we're not going to put 10,000 hours into here, 
but this is a beautiful, beautiful piece for you to practice with. So with that said, <clears throat> we never want to work on our final piece until we do some practicing. So um, when I make a pillow, I usually put batting and um, muslin on the back. So I had some leftover muslin and I just went ahead and put shape flex on the back of it and I started tracing my flower. Well, the fun thing about tracing is it actually helps you understand what you're going to, how you're going to be quilting it too. So for example, I started at the top here and um, when you are marking your project, you can put a bigger dot where you want to start so that it's a reminder of, um, of where to start and how to stop. So watch how this works. I already started it a little bit. So I went down and around. So I did like um, infinity. And then I did the net, I did the little swirl between and went to the top of the next one. And I'm moving my fabric for tracing. But when I'm actually quilting, I'm not moving my fabric. I'm moving it up and down and sideways, but I'm not rotating my fabric. So now I'm going to do the next one. And you can see that it's just one continuous stitch out. And then I'm going to come around and pick up the top of this one. And then do this swirl here. And then just for drawing purposes, when we're quilting, we're not going to be moving our, rotating our fabric. We're just going to be moving it. And then I'm going to do this one. And um, just remember that what you draw is not necessarily what you stitch. So if you have a mistake, uh, what you would consider a mistake in your drawing, just don't quilt the mistake in. We're just going to keep on going around. So I'm now almost done. This is my last flower petal set. And then what's really cool about it is I'm going to just finish up by going all the way around. And the beauty is I have only got one set of threads that I have to worry about. Because when I end here, all of my threads, all four of my threads are going to be in the same place that I started. So you can see how easy this is. And now I'm back to here. So when I start, oops, I missed one. Like I said, just because you draw in a mistake doesn't mean that you have to stitch it. So um, I missed that last loop, but you can see that it's all one run and start and stop here. Now when we get on the machine, I'm gonna show you how I like to start and stop. But what I'll do is I'll do a section and then I will sew my threads away because I don't want any of my threads on the top. It's not so important in a pillow. Um, in fact, in my pillow, I just pulled the threads to the back and tied them in a knot. But if you're doing a table topper or anything that you want someone to actually see, then you're going to um, have to be diligent about making sure you sew those threads away. Okay, let's talk about circles for just a second here. And um, you'll see that there are a number of circles around. I would, of course, take my circle ruler and mark all of these lines, but for now I'm just going to trace them just so we can get to the part where we want to do this. Circles. Okay, so I'm just going to trace that around a little bit. It's so much easier using rulers to do this than it is to do it freehand. There are parts that you want freehand and there are parts that you don't want freehand. Okay, so now let's talk about circles. So there's a couple of ways that you can stitch circles out. I like to draw them in because it gives me the uh, visual. I'm a very visual person, so I have to see it before I can do it. And um, this allows me to see spatially where they're going. I don't remember if there are an odd or even number here, but it does, um, it does affect how you are going to finish. But let me show you. So you would think, if we're drawing this, that we're just going to draw the circles, right? Well, we could, but that doesn't give you any... Um, ideas on how you're going to quilt it because we would never quilt one circle at a time. That'd be just way too many strings and too many starts and stops. So what we're going to do is we're going to start at the center. So I'm putting my bigger dot here so that I can actually see uh, where I'm going. And I'm going to go over and then I'm going to go under and then I'm going to go over 
and under. It's easier if I have a light table, but it's hard to film with the light table on. So I'm just going over and under. It kind of looks like an S, doesn't it? And um, one of the things that I've discovered is the more I do this, the smoother my circles become. And I can actually, um, for the most part now, get a really good circle by using this method. Um, the other method would be to um, go over all the top halves and then meet in the middle. Okay. So I'm going to stop here. Let's see. One, two, three, four. Oops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. So when you have um, oh, you know what? I don't have to stop there. I can go right to here. So this is 21. And then on an odd number, we have 21 circles on an odd number, then you just start on the next part and you go the other direction. And that's how we're going to do our circles. It's going to look much better when we quilt it. But this is how I did mine and I love this method. And the other thing that you can do is you can do the top half all the way around and then the bottom half all the way around. And maybe I said that already, but um, the third way that you can do it is just to do each individual one. Okay, now you're probably asking yourself, why am I tracing this off on muslin if I've already got um, my real one done and ready to go? Well, the reason I trace it off on muslin is because I'm going to practice quilting on muslin before I ever get to my project. So that's a little bit about how to look at the quilting and see, um, see what you are looking for. Um, the other thing that you could do if you really wanted to practice perfectly is you could draw kind of a line all the way around here. This is all going to come out. But if you really want it to be super, super perfect, which we don't, we just want it to be finished, um, you could draw a line down the center, and that'll give you your pivot point for the S's that you're going to do. So those are just a couple of helpful things um, on circles and how to do that. Now, let's go over here, and what do we want to do next? Um, let's talk about the center of this one. So we've uh, finished up the big circle. Now I want to talk about the center of this other circle. And um, I'm going to just trace my circle. These are all straight lines, so we're going to use our circle ruler to make the circle when we quilt it. And then we're going to make the circle. And I'm going to start here. So again, I'm going to put a dot, a bigger dot, where I want to start. It just, once I, when, when I'm drawing, I know what I want to quilt, but when I get it to the machine, if I don't have these extra big dots on there, um, then I have to think it through again, and I, I only want to think it through one time before I get started. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here, and I'm going to go up with my ruler, and then I'm going to go over to the next line, and yes, I am, um, I am stitching back across the circle that we did. Then I'm going to go down, stitch back across the circle that we did, I'm going to go up, and I'm doing all of this with ruler work and um, keeping my fabric oriented straight like this. And then over, 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 I think there, is there one more line in there? Nope, that's the last one. So then I can go up to the next one. And if you want to, you can turn your work so that you're doing, oops, up, over, up, over. And I, I, just, I just think it's so important to trace it the way you would quilt it, because that's going to help set in your mind what you're, what you're doing and how you're going to do it. Okay, so that's the center of this one. Um, let me show you this last circle. Um, and then the rest of it is ruler work. 
and um, a little bit of free motion. We'll talk about the free motion along the edge there in just a second. And this one, um, we're going to do the center circle last. Let me see if I can remember how I quilted this. Um, so it's the same thing. We're going in and out. So much easier with a light table. And in and out. And again, if you want to mark the centers of those circles um, around so you can see them, I just think this is such a cool way to do circles. Okay, and then we get to this point, and this is an even number, so now we have to change directions to do the other way. So on odd number it seems to just let you flow with that. On even numbers we have to switch directions to make it work. And again I'm just I'm tracing it exactly the way that I would quilt it. So um, well I probably wouldn't stitch over twice like that. <laughs> but um, I love these pens. Uh, this is this is to me the um, nicest uh, water-based marking pen. It just, it's called a Chaco Ace, Chaco Ace Fine Marker Blue. It's awesome. And you can see you can make it darker or lighter. And if you have something that you've marked that you don't like, you can literally just take a spray bottle and uh, of water and it will make it go away. Okay, now um, the next thing we want to do are the inside ones here. So we're going to go down, over, and up. And these I did, unfortunately, have to do each one individually. Down, over, and up. Down, over, and up. Down, over, and up down, over, and up. Okay, and then last but not least we're going to do one circle around the middle just to kind of cover up those um, lines. There we go. Um, on this one I decided to do the circle last because I have a lot of a lot of places around that I want to make sure we cover so it, it just looks like it's been triple stitched. Alright, so that's how you do the center there. But again, we're doing all the circles in one run. We're not going to, um, we're not doing one circle at a time. And you can see as you practice that your um, circles are going to get better and look more um, finished. And that's just a matter of practice. Like Libby Lehman used to say, 10,000 hours, you'll have it down. Okay, let's look at the um, border here real quick. And I just want to say, what do I want to say about that? Oh, um, I love this border. This border, right here, this border is so cool. It's actually a double serpentine. I don't know if you can see that or not, but uh, we're going to do the bigger one first, and then we're going to come back and do the second one on the inside. It is the coolest effect. Now, one thing to think about on your quilting, if you want something to really stand out, instead of doing the same color thread throughout, you could take, for example, and do your background thread for the big serpentine and then take, um, for example, on this one I'm doing teal, um, a teal back to this pillow. I could take a teal thread and I could serpentine a teal thread. In fact, I might do that on the second one just because it's such a cool idea. And um, serpentine a teal through here um, where I'm doing uh, heavier fills. Um, for example, here um, for my um, stippling. I think I might do a teal thread there. And it doesn't have to be a strong color. Um, the softer the color, the better. And um, any place where I have a fill, I might do that on this one, just because I want to see what that look of two different colors is like. Okay, so our fabrics are prepared, and we've traced everything off, and you've got some ideas um, you've got some good ideas on how to mark them so you know when you get to your machine where to get started. And the next thing we're going to do is um, put some batting and some muslin on the backs of these so that we can do some practice. Okay, when we get ready to do the real deal, the real one, um, 
I use 505 spray and I spray my batting and then put my top on it and then I flip it over and I spray my batting and I put my muslin on it so that I have a sandwich that has been um, spray basted together. I don't want um, I don't want any loose fabric at all if I can avoid it because it's just going to be an opportunity for the fabric to pucker. So by spray basting the three layers together it gives us a really solid foundation to quilt from. Okay, um, we're going to go spray base this and then we'll be back at the machine here in just a few minutes to get started. Hi everybody, Taya here from Quilting Delights and we are getting ready to start um, practicing our stitching and I just wanted to make a couple of comments about batting. Usually when you get it out of a package it's all wrinkled and tight like this and I don't like to put that in my projects because the wrinkles will stay in your fabric. So um, a little unknown trick that we discovered because we long arm quilt for customers, sometimes they'll bring us packaged batting that um, just you take it out and I swear the company suck all the air out of the bags for uh, the tightest packaging that they can get. But what happens is it comes to you like this and we can't, we can't put this in a quilt. We don't want to put this in a quilt. So anytime you're working on a project, please let your batting breathe. And when you have one like this, this piece looked exactly like this 30 seconds ago. I sprayed it with um, uh, some water. I just uh, lightly sprayed it with some water, flattened it out, flipped it over, sprayed it with some water on the other side, flattened it out, and now it's perfect and ready to be put into my project. Look at that. It's a miracle. Okay, so we are ready to practice for just a little bit before we get started on the real thing. And I want to share a couple things with you. So I have spray basted these three layers together and you can see that they're not shifting, which is the goal. We don't want the back to shift and we don't want the front to shift. But when you go to start working on your project, the real thing, what we're going to do is we're going to um, sew a line. So on the pillow project itself, there's an outside line that goes all the way around. And what I want you to do is stitch that down, down one side and across the top. And what that does is it sets the fabric so that we can um, not have it shift. And we're going to work our way um, from the left side over and then from the top down. We're going to do our uh, ruler work first and then we're going to come back and do the rest of it. All right, so I'm going to grab my straight edge and we're going to uh, stitch a line down the side and one across the top because we're going to work our way across and down. And if we set that left side and the top edge, it will make all the difference in the world. So I'm going to put my stitch regulator on, which I've already done. Um, this is a Bernina, but you can do this project on any machine. This is not about Bernina as much as it is about you becoming a really great quilter. Now, if you do have a Bernina, the stitch regulator is an awesome tool. It does not come with a ruler work attachment. So I invented one, and it comes the one I invented comes in three sizes, and it snaps on and off just like the original one. So these attachments are compatible with the stitch regulator. So you just have to squeeze, this is so much easier to do when it's off the machine. You just squeeze the sides, squeeze the sides here and it'll pop right off. And then for now we're going to put the quarter inch one on. The little one is a quarter inch from center. The medium one is a half inch from center. The big one is an inch from center. And we're going to play with um, how these ruler attachments work. Now if you have a regular um, sewing machine or quilting machine or um, a sit down quilting machine with that comes with a ruler foot it's going to look like this and what we're looking for is a foot that has the height on the side so that it bumps right up next to the ruler and that way we can get really nice straight lines really nice circles um, you can see from this attachment here that a regular foot's just going to slide right underneath and then you could break your uh, machine so we want to make sure we've got the right tool for the right job. And for this one, it is... I always feel like I have to stand on my head to get the stitch regulator attached. All right, and I'm being prompted to drop my feed dogs. So when we quilt, when we quilt, the machine setup is to have your threads on. And I'm going to talk about threads for just a second here. 
Um, in this particular case, I'm going to use a thread that matches my background, but remember when we were um, setting this up, we said, oh, what if we did some of those fills with a, a thread color that's just a shade darker or has some color to match what we're doing for the piping? So that's a possibility, but for right now, I just have plain thread on. And you want to have your top and bottom threads weighted the same. So in other words, I have a 50 weight, um, oh, what do I have on here? Oh, this is a... Um, cotton. This is 100% cotton, but I also like to quilt with um, metrosine, which is a polyester, but you want to have your weights the same top and bottom. Now, um, one thing that I've discovered on a regular sewing machine, um, on a quilting machine, is that I like to have my tension pull to the bottom just a little bit, so sometimes I have to adjust that on the bobbin case. Um, every machine is going to be different, but that's why we're practicing because we want to double check and see what our tensions are before we put it on a real project. Okay, so if we are going to practice on a project, I've seen this a hundred times and it um, really is, um, it is kind of funny, uh, but we'll set up a batik quilt project that we want to quilt and then we will practice on cotton and with a batting that's different than what we're actually working with in our project. And then we go back to the batik one, which is not cotton, and our threads and tensions are off. So make sure that whatever you're practicing on is exactly the same combination of fabrics, threads, and batting that you're going to be using in your final project. So that's what I have here. I have cotton on the top. I have shape flex. I have um, Hobbs 8020. I love the 8020 batting. Uh, warm. The Warm Company puts out a really nice one too. It's 80% cotton, 20% polyester, so that um, you get a little bit of loft. We want a little bit of punch to it, a little, when we stitch, we want it to pop up around the stitching. That's what makes the quilting look so great. And we're ready to go. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do is pull our thread to the top. So I'm gonna put my foot down and needle down. Oh, it wants me to tell it. Yes. Oh, the other thing I was going to tell you on the Berninas is um, with the stitch regulator, I increase my stitch length to three just because I don't like my stitches so tight. Uh, when you're doing free motion with just a regular foot, you're controlling the stitch length with how fast or slow you move it. So um, that's an added thing that you want to watch. But with the stitch regulator, I like to actually bump my stitch length up to three because it really does make the stitches very, very tight if you don't. Okay, so we're going to needle up, needle down, and notice where my ruler is. It's not anywhere near my foot. I'm going to needle up, needle down, and through the little slot here, I'm going to pull my threads up. Now, if you have a foot that doesn't have a slot, if you have a ruler work foot and it doesn't have a slot, here's how you do it. You just move off, the prod, off from under the needle just a little tiny bit, pull your threads to the top, and then realign. That's how you pop that thread to the top there. Okay, so I'm going to set a couple of stitches so I can let go of my thread and um, put my thread to the back. And then I'm just focused on my ruler. Okay, so pretend like there's a line down here. There will be on your pillow project, and you're going to be doing this on the outside line. So I'm going to start it up. And then when I stop, I'm going to turn it off. Okay. Now, some of you may have a walking foot. And if you have a walking foot, that's something else that you can use to do this. If you have a walking foot um, to do the straight lines on the outside edge, you have to remember to take the um, Easy Glide sheets off because you've got to be able to have your feed dogs up. That's why I'm just going ahead and doing it with um, the um, stitch regulator and my ruler because I can get a really, really straight line. Okay, I'm going to pop my foot up. cut my thread and go to the top and work my way across. Now, since I'm, and look how, look at how, it's just a thing of beauty. I just love it. Really consistent stitches and a straight line um, to boot. Now, because I'm using my stitch regulator, I'm gonna go ahead and pull in my um, Easy Glide sheet and get that set up. Uh, I tried this the other day, we were filming a segment and I, would, I had this down because it makes my work surface so slick. I just love it. 
but uh, I went to stitch something with the regular foot and lo and behold, you can't stitch, uh, you can't have the feed dogs up when you have this on. So I had to take it off. All right, we have a product called Ease, or a Tack It Down Tape and I love it. It's a paper tape, it tears easily. It's great for machine embroidery projects um, as well as putting my Easy Glide sheet down. And I'm just going to tape it on two sides. That's all I need. Um, I will tell you, if you sew through this, um, it can get on your needle. Um, and then all you have to do is just take a piece of or a, um, alcohol wipe and just wipe your needle off. It comes right off. It's pretty cool stuff. Okay, so now I have a super, super slick work surface. And I can do pretty much anything I want. See how easy it slides around? All right. First thing we're going to do is um, do an inside. Actually, I'm going to show you over here where I don't have anything. I'm going to show you how to do a circle. And then we're going to change the foot up to a half inch and do the circle again. And that circle will then have a quarter inch echo around it. It's pretty cool. All right. Foot down. Needle down and up. Pull my threads to the top. It is helpful here sometimes to have a pair of tweezers, um, not a bad thing to have around. Okay, so just for the heck of it, let's just go ahead and stitch this. Oh, you know what? I had my foot on the foot pedal. So I had forgotten, with the stitch regulator, I actually like to unplug the foot pedal because it's um, distracting for me. And the one thing that's missing on this project is I do not have the rough it up tape on my ruler, and so it slides. But we're going to see if we can't do this. The Amanda Murphy rulers have a good grip on the bottom, so that's helpful. And we just want to be, make sure, I have one spot that it slipped. I want to be pressing up against that foot and ruler all the time. Okay, so here's my circle. It looks pretty good. I have one spot where I went off and another spot over here. So this is why we practice, because we want to make sure that our circles are going to turn out just right. So I'm going to raise this and um, raise my foot because I'm going to break my thread here. And I'm going to take the attachment off. Again, make sure that your foot is not on the foot pedal. We don't want this thing to be stitching. It's easier to take the attachment off when I can... And now I'm going to put my half inch one on. And they snap on these um, compat compatible attachments snap on just like the uh, regular attachments do. And then we're going to plug that back in. And we're ready to go. Okay. Um, probably I would sew those threads away. And I'm going to realign this and put my foot down, pull my threads to the top, the other thing I like to do when I'm quilting is to have music on that just helps me um, remember to breathe and relax. Okay, so I'm going to needle up, needle down, needle up, needle down, and then we're ready to go. And you don't want to go too far around the back on these because the stitch regulator doesn't have um, much of a um, uh, buffer 
uh, you can't fit this into the circle. I'm going to show you how to do an inside circle here in just a second with the regular foot. But um, I love doing echoing this way because I get really precise echoes. Now, one thing I will tell you is that um, when you get ready to do this, you can put marks. See how um, the good measure rulers have a lot of lines. And the great thing about the lines is they can help you. You can set up um, just little markers on those um, so that when you go to do the echo around the outside, it actually is going to line up exactly the way it should. For now, I'm just showing you some ideas on things that you can do with the rulers. And being able to do an echo like this, um, most every, in fact, I can uh, tell you for sure that we have echo feet, echo, um, uh, the echo things, whatever you call those, echo clips, I think is what they're called. We have echo clips that you can put on a regular, just a regular ruler work foot. They're available by um, Westerly, and if anybody has a regular foot and you want to do this echo quilting where you get exactly a quarter inch outside, just let me know and I can get those echo feet, those echo clips that go on these for you. But with the stitch regulator, what we have are the um, stitch, stitch regulator compatible attachments, and those are already set up for you with quarter inch, half inch, and one inch. So let's finish this and I can show you what the effect is. Now some people have asked me, do I like to wear gloves when I quilt? And I don't. Um, I know that there is a school of thought on doing that. Um, I just have really long fingers and so I find that when I purchase gloves, I wear through the ends of the fingers so fast that um, it doesn't help me. So I've just learned uh, to use the gripper tape on the rulers. That makes a huge difference. And there we go. So this is rough, but you can see that it does a really nice echo all the way around the outside edge. All right, so that's how we're going to do circles. And then um, let me break my threads here, and we'll do a little bit of line work. And then it's time for you to get busy on your project. So we're going to start. Oh, I have to switch this out again. I'm going back to my quarter inch because um, it's the easiest one for me to see. And, you know, some people have said, oh, it, it takes a bit to switch that out. You know, you get to the point where um, it is just automatic. I've done it so much now that to me it just seems normal. Okay, let's do a little bit of line work here. And then I'm going to send you on your way to start quilting. Okay, so remember when we set this up, we put a dot where we want to start, just, just as a reminder. So now I don't have to think about it. I can just go to that dot, and my ruler's out of the way. I'm going to um, needle up, needle down, and bring my threads to the top. And on this particular one, all of these um, stitch regulator attachments have a slot in the side, so it's easy to bring the thread up. But if you have just a regular ruler work foot, it's not a big deal. You just move it off to the side, pull your thread up, and then reset um, with your needle in the right position. Uh, I like to do a couple of needle up, needle downs just to lock those threads. And then I'm going to get my threads out of the way. My needle is where I need it uh, to stitch. And so I'm just going to stitch. And I know you can't see it from where you are, but underneath here, I have my legs crossed because that reminds me to keep my foot off the pedal. So I don't have to do any, anything but just sit here and in a very relaxed manner, I can stitch this out. Okay, so I've gotten to the bottom here. I'm going to hit my stitch regulator again, and I'm just going to um, freehand to the next line setup. And then I'm going to... Um, so backwards. And then I'm going to stop and I'm going to sew to the next line. I love this. This is uh, one of the funnest things in the world to me is doing this kind of cross hatching. I just love it. And then we sew down 
And just remember um, to keep your ruler away from the foot when you're not using it. Now I think this would be really cool in a different color thread, so I'm pretty sure that's what I'm going to do on mine. I'm going to have two versions, the one that we did originally to test the pattern, and then I'm going to have a second one that has um, different color fills. Look how cool this is. Wait until you see it. And so the great part about doing it this way is that I don't have to reorient my fabric. I'm not rotating this, you know, 15 times and trying to work the bulk through the center here. Um, I'm just working with the, with the fabric in one direction. Even when I go to do sideways, um, I'm still probably going to do that. Um, I don't know. We'll see. We're almost there, so... In fact, we are there. All right, so now I need to travel to this top one because that's where we're going to start. And I'm just going to go straight across. And I haven't changed the orientation of my fabric at all. This is so cool. I love it. Okay, so now I'm going to travel down to the next one. And then I'm going to go straight across. And I've never, I've never had to move my fabric. I've never had to move my fabric. That's the beauty of machine quilting, is that you literally um, can just leave your fabric oriented one way. If you're using a sewing foot um, and trying to sew, you're going to be turning your fabric all the time. And I did that for a number of years when I first started quilting for people. I did it in my um, Bernina 170, which was a fabulous machine, but it almost killed my shoulders and my elbows so I love doing this so much more and I'm very relaxed I'm not in the least bit wound up like I am sometimes when I'm sewing trying to finish a project and I just it's very very soothing for me and very relaxing to do this and I haven't even had a glass of wine yet So if you're off just a tiny bit on where your line placement is, don't worry about it. Um, we're going to erase these lines when we're done. Oh, this is just a thing of beauty. I just love it. It doesn't get much better than this, being able to relax and do what I love best. Okay, we're coming. This is the last line across. Okay, we're done with that section, and look how great that turned out. Let me just lift my foot here. Look at that. It's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful, and I did it in less than five minutes, so I'm very, very excited about that. Okay, um, I think you have enough information to be um, useful and dangerous. So I'm going to say to you, um, it's time to get stitching and go out there, stitch up a storm. And when we're done with this, we'll come back and I'll show you how to put it all together. I will say that it's going to take you um, maybe 10 hours to quilt this, and I would do it in sections. Don't think that you're going to sit down and do it all in one sitting. Um, you might break it up into three different parts. Do the circles first and then do all of your straight line quilting, and then do all of your fills. So um, do a little bit of everything, but um, do it in a way that you're going to be successful with it and not all stressed out. Remember to relax and breathe. Um, watch our YouTube channel at www. I'm sorry, uh, YouTube channel at Quilting Delights, and we are posting more videos, including some fun tips and tricks for um, different kinds of projects. We'll see you back here shortly. Hi, everyone. Welcome back, and we are now ready to put our project together. I wanted to talk about a couple of things in getting ready, and what you'll notice here is that my quilting is starting to come to the surface, which is really great. And I'm going to go do a final press on this to get the lines off. But before I do that, I can see my lines, but I want to actually do a little bit of trimming up before we get started here. So I'm going to, I have taken mine over to the cutting table 
I've cut a quarter inch outside the outside line. And our target for this is 20 inches, which is this line right here. But I gave myself just a little bit of extra room so that when we go to put the piping on, um, we'll actually be able to see it around the outside edge just a little tiny bit. So here are a couple things to think about. When you go to press this, you're going to flatten out your quilting. And that happens every time. It's just, you know, it's just the way it is. The way to fluff it up and get that quilting to pop to the top again is to just lightly mist it with a spray bottle of water and toss it in your dryer and that quilting will pop right to the surface. It's amazing how that happens. It happens on quilts as well, but in particular it's going to happen on this one and all the lines will be gone. All right, so we're, we're ready with this part and we've trimmed that up to just a quarter inch outside the outside line. I will go um, press it um, to get the lines out here in just a little tiny bit. All right, now we want to work on the back and the piping. So what I've done is uh, the pattern calls for two-thirds of a yard of fabric. And what you're going to do is you're going to cut that on the fold and then get two pieces of 11-inch fusible fleece or batting. It doesn't matter to me what you use, but you're going to have, you're going to fold it over and the front and the back are going to be covered just like that. And I want to make sure if I have selvage at all, um, these are going to go on here and we'll trim them. But if I have selvage at all, I want it to be on the top because that's the part that's going to get trimmed off. Is that right? We'll go with that. Okay, so I have a, um, I trimmed this to 21 and a half inches wide because that's the width of my pillow. And I have a 22 inch zipper which I'm going to make sure um, the little metal tab on the bottom here is either outside or enough inside that I don't run over it with my sewing needle when I attach it to the pillow. So you have to be really aware of that. You can do a 24 inch zipper which would make it even easier. Um, I just happen to have a 22 inch zipper and so that's what we're working with. Now one of my favorite things about um, putting a zipper in is this stuff called Wonder Tape. And what it is, is it's a, a glue strip, in essence, that you lay down on either side of the zipper and um, you peel the paper off and then we're going to position our fabric on it and stitch that down with our zipper foot. So I'm going to go get that ready for you right now and we'll show you in the sewing machine. So I have put um, Wonder Tape on both edges of the zipper and this stuff is really cool. It just works really well, but you do need to take a pen or some kind of a burnishing tool and just kind of press it into the zipper itself. It'll work much better for you that way. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just making sure that the glue that's on these strips is really set well on the zipper. And um, then we're gonna rip it off like a Band-Aid and put it down. I'm just going to lay the fabrics that are folded. So if you'll remember, we just took our half of a half of a piece of fabric and we folded it around a piece of fusible fleece. And now I'm going to take this over to my sewing machine and I'm going to use my zipper foot and sew these two pieces down. Okay, so I now have my zipper foot on my machine. And the thing you all need to remember, very near and dear to your heart, is that the zipper foot does not have an opening down the center of the foot. So you really need to make sure that you have your needle positioned so that it doesn't run into that um, center part of that foot. Now, here's what I can tell you. If you do it, your needle's going to break and you'll never do it again. So, um, but let's not have this be uh, firsty for anybody on that. So I've moved my needle position over and I am running the edge of my zipper foot along the edge of the fabric so that I can get a really nice uh, finished top stitch. You'll want to notice that I only pulled off one piece of paper at a time, one side of the zipper at a time. So I'm going to, and you don't have to back tack because we're going to sew, um, we're going to sew over these with a seam. So I'm literally just top stitching this onto the zipper. It's such an easy way to make this look good. Now, the other thing, I've had several people say, well, shouldn't I quilt the back of this? You certainly can if you want to. 
Um, I find that when you put the pillow in, it fills it out, and so I don't really want the focus to be on the back of my pillow, I want it to be on the front. So this is a nice way to finish it, but I, I do not recommend that you just put a piece of fabric on here and then have your pillow in it. You actually need to have a little bit of body on the back side there. Okay, so I'm gonna sew a little faster. We're gonna do the other side, and then this is prepared and ready for assembly. As soon as we finish the zipper, we're gonna make the piping, and then I'm gonna show you how to lay that onto um, your pillow and clip the corners so that they're nice and round. And we will be back with that in just a moment. All right, go sew your zippers to your backs. Hi everyone, we're back and we're on the home stretch here of getting our pillow finished and put together. We've got the back all done with a zipper ready to go and now we're gonna make the piping. And I like piping on pillows. I like it on bags. Um, I like it any place where I need the seam to push out a little bit and that's one of the most effective things about putting piping in your projects is it will push the seams out so that your pillow is much fuller and much much better. Now I'm using a 3 8 uh, I'm sorry I'm using a 1 8 inch thick uh, it's not rope really it's um, I don't know what it is it's uh, we have it here in the store and um, we have it by the mile but it's a little bit thicker than a standard piping, um, mini piping, and it's not as thick as the big corded piping. I'm not um, interested in that so much, I just want to get the effect on the edge. Now, the thing about piping is, you want to make it bigger and then trim it down. You can purchase pre-packaged um, piping if you want to, but I like to make it with fabrics that are going to match the project that I'm working on. So, we're going to start out about an inch down, this fabric is an inch and a quarter. We're gonna roll it over the piping and sew down the edge and then um, trim it down to a quarter inch um, before we put it on our pillow. Okay, now here are a couple things that you wanna know. So we're going to need two strips of fabric. You're gonna sew those together with a bias seam. Press the seam open and then do not press this strip the length like you do with binding. We don't want to press it because we don't want to crease on the outside of our piping. We want the fabric to just roll over. So you're going to start about an inch down because we need a little bit of, um, a little bit of fabric to fold over when we put it into our, our um, pillow edge. And then I still have my zipper foot on. So I'm going to roll this over. And it is um, smart for you to use fabric or use thread that matches the color of your fabric. Okay, so I have that rolled over, and now I'm going to drop my zipper foot into position, and I'm gonna start from the very beginning. Now I'm using um, a contrasting thread because I want you to be able to see what we're doing, and I'm just going to stitch that as close as I can. But again, it's gonna look better if you have it all the same color with the threads. So what I do is I push it up against there with my fingernail and then I sew it. And you can see that it turns out really nice and tight and I pull it a little bit to the opposite side so that stitching is really really right next to the right next to the piping. Okay, so we're going to make our whole strip, all, all um, two strips actually, we're going to make that whole thing and I will meet you at the cutting table and show you how to trim this up and get ready to put on our pillow. Okay, we're at the cutting table now and we've got our piping all sewn and I want to show you this nifty um, ruler called the Piping Hot Binding Ruler and what I love about this, um, besides the fact that it's just really cool, is that it has a um, channel down one side and a channel down the other. And the one side allows you to cut it a quarter inch, the other side allows you to cut the seam a half inch from your piping. So once you get your piping started, and I have it set in there, this one wants to roll. There we go. Now I can just um, lickety split, trim that to a quarter inch, 
And as you move, what's cool about it is that you can just pull it and it stays right in the little channel. And so I'm going to cut all of this and then we're going to come right back to our pillow and get this attached. Look how fast that is. Oops, it pulled a little too hard. It helps if you have your fabric all laid out ahead of your piping laid out ahead of you. just amazing to me what having the right tools does for you. There's no other way to cut this quarter inch effectively without this ruler. Now there is another one. There's a second ruler that um, she has put out. This is put out by Susan Cleveland. There's a second one that she has for doing the heavier, bigger home deck piping. And it's the same idea. It's just that the ruler is a little bit thicker and the channels are a little bit deeper to hold that thicker piping. So both of these are great tools. They're available on our website or at your local quilt shop. We like you to support your local quilt shops as well, um, especially now when we're past the holiday season and we're all looking for fun projects to do. Okay, so my piping is cut. Don't forget to close your rotary cutter. And now I'm just going to move this out of the way, grab my pillow top, and I'll be right back. All right, so we're ready to put this project together. And I just want to make sure we've got um, an inch on either end that doesn't have piping in it so that we can do an overlap when we go to finish this. And I used a contrasting thread just so that you can see how this is set up. But again, I would encourage you to use a... Um, use a matching thread so that you don't see it. So what we're going to do now to keep this edge so that you can actually see it, we're going to, I'm going to just start in the middle, and I'm going to use the line that we've cut, the seam that we've cut, and I'm going to line that up on the outside line. I'm going to line that up on the outside line. And when I get to my corner, can you see that I have marked, I actually just used my little 7 Series bobbin. I marked this with a corner curve, and I'm going to lay that on there, and then I'm going to clip the fabric so that it opens up and lays down flat. So the easiest way to do that is to pin on the other side, like this. So I'm going to pin on either side of the curve, and then I'm just going to carefully clip just a few little places. And you don't want to clip it all the way to the stitching because we need it to stay, we need to have some of that stitching there. But I'm just clipping a little bit around so that it gives when we make the turn. So now it's going to be really nice. See how it splays out? And it's going to be a really nice turn. So we're going to do that all the way around, and then we're going to, what I like to do is I like to baste my piping in, and then I'm going to come back and take my pillow top backing, and just make sure that you put right sides together. It's a little hard to tell because the back side looks the same as the front side, so just make sure you put this, um, cut this to size. You're going to trim it to size so it's the same size as your backing. Be careful about cutting the zipper. I would not cut the zipper, I would just cut the fabric and then we'll trim the zipper when we're all done. But you're going to put this together and you can feel the piping right here. You can see it. I can mark it with my finger and you're going to sew just on the outside of that piping. If it's easier for you, flip it over and sew on the other side where you can actually see the basting stitch that you've put in. But we're going to sew all the way around. Remember when you get to the end here, we're going to overlap these into the seam allowance. That's how you're going to finish it out. 
and um, that's going to make it a really nice finish all the way around. So um, we're going to go finish this up and I want to thank you guys for joining us. We will have some teasers coming up about the um, geckos on the move and I'm going to share some information with you about Gabby who actually designed all of these projects uh, from Argentina. I will share a little bit more information with you on our next project. Thanks very much. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube videos and tell your friends. We want everybody quilting and stitching up a storm.